Method overriding versus method overloading. These two terms will appear so much in programming and these are so important to know. So let's talk about method overriding. So method overriding is basically this amazing feature that allows a subclass in object-oriented programming to have a method with the same name and the same parameters as one declared in its parent class. We'll have the f accessibility to get the same exact function which is declared in a base class and use it in and override it in some kind of derived class. So this becomes so handy and allows subclasses to implement a specific kind of behavior for that particular method. Then the version of the method used is determined by the object that is used to call it. Method overloading on the other hand is similar to overriding. You could have the same kind of names but they should differ in the parameter lists. So overloaded methods are distinguished by their number and type of parameters. So you could change up the number of parameters, you could change up the types of parameters, but the name should be the same. So that's basically method overloading. You could think of constructor overloading as an example, uh, which we have like different types of constructors, default constructor, there's a parameterized constructor, the copy constructor. So these constructors are basically overloading. And you could use like, there's uh, different options to choose from. All right, so let's take a look at this programming example. We have a public class car and it has a public string color and public int speed. So you can see these access modifiers are prepended before the data types here and you could tell that these are instance variables. And then you have public static string default color and we have public static int default speed and there's some kind of value associated to these. So this static keyword is added after the access modifier, in this case public. This basically indicates that the declared entity is the same across all instances of that class and that it can be accessed even before an object of that class is created. So even before object creation you could access default color or default speed because they're static. Now what we want to do here is we have a public car constructor and it has this keyword which has a default color and a default speed and you can see over here they have another constructor and this is a parameterized constructor and it has a string color input parameter and it has an int speed input parameter and you can see over here this dot color is equal to color and this dot speed is equal to speed so you can tell here this is a constructor which is calling the other constructor inside which is this using the this keyword with the input parameters as default color and default speed which are static so you can then access this other constructor which is the parameterized constructor and then you can associate the color with the instance variable this dot color and this dot speed with the other instance variable down here in the main driven logic we have a car object being instantiated from the car class and then we have the static color being being assigned to the default color which is the static variable inside the class and it's going to equal to black so we can access this anywhere and then we have string instance color and that is equal to the car object dot color so this is the instance variable and this is non-static variable accessible using instance so car object we use the car object to access that and in this case we didn't use any kind of object we basically used it without so this is one of those examples of what I wanted to show. I hope you got something out of this.